Hey guys, this is Lisa and today I wanted to talk about one of the most stigmatized topics in the women's health and sexuality arena and that is abortion. Now even though millions and millions of abortions take place every year, there's so much shame and misinformation that shrouds this topic and that needs to change. And so I spoke to one of the country's most respected gynecologists about what abortion entails, what the legal status is in India and why every woman deserves the right to make decisions about her own body and reproductive health. So I thought I would share what I learned. Let's get started with the basics. What is abortion? So abortion is basically defined as a pregnancy which is terminated early and there are different definitions but we usually take a cutoff as 22 weeks. Abortions happen in nature all the time. 10%, some people believe 20% of all pregnancies land up with a spontaneous abortion. But I think today we have decided to focus on induced abortion, where abortion is induced for a pregnancy for a number of different reasons, but mainly reasons that are important to the woman herself. And in the first trimester, they can either, either be done medically or they can be done by a very simple surgical procedure. Dr. Noser mentions the word trimester. Now that might be a term that some people aren't familiar with, but essentially since a pregnancy typically lasts nine months, that is a duration that can be broken down into three segments of three months each, or three trimesters. And most abortions tend to take place in the first trimester. Early stage abortions tend to be safer, easier, and cost less than late stage abortions. Is abortion legal in India? Yes, abortion is legal in India under the MTP Act of 1971 or the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. Abortion is legal in India up to 20 weeks into a pregnancy. Now, up to 12 weeks into a pregnancy, the law requires that a woman has the authorization of at least one medical provider in order to obtain an abortion. And between 12 weeks and 20 weeks, she requires the authorization of two medical providers. And I'll now let Dr. Noser take us through the criteria under which women are eligible to obtain an abortion in India. Our law stresses that abortions need to be done for a reason. But the reasons are so broad that in effect any woman can have an abortion. So it says that if there's a danger to her life, that you can terminate at any time. 28 weeks, 30 weeks, doesn't matter. If this woman's life is at risk, terminate the pregnancy. If her physical or mental health is at risk, and this is vague, very mental vague, health, I mean. mental health, she is unmarried, she is going to be under tremendous stress and pressure, I'm justified, or if the mental health of that fetus or embryo or physical or mental health is at risk, I can terminate a pregnancy. She's been exposed to x-rays. She's had a German measles infection. I don't need to prove an abnormality. I can terminate it. And the last one is failure of contraception. Now, this, okay. of course, again, out of sync because 1971, our law still says failure of contraception when used by a married couple, as if your unmarrieds don't come under this, which we want to change. So, can an unmarried woman access abortion in India? Yes, a woman does not have to be married in order to be able to obtain an abortion. So, going by the criteria that Dr. Noser explained, for example, an unmarried woman could seek an abortion on the grounds that it would negatively impact her physical or mental health. If you are 18 years or older and sound of mind as a woman, you do not require the permission of your parents, spouse or anyone else other than your doctor to get an abortion and you can be ensured that your confidentiality will be respected. Can you legally access abortion as a minor? Now this is a tricky one because under the POXO Act, while you can legally access abortion as a minor, all sexual activity under the age of 18 is considered rape, even if it is in fact consensual. So so while medical practitioners are allowed to legally perform an abortion on a minor, they are also obligated to report that minor to the police simply for being sexually active. So in effect, in this country, you have criminalized all sex under 18. Now sex under 18 is a reality and it is not always coercion. In fact, in a majority of older adolescents, it is a kind of consensual sex. At a stroke of a pen, the parliament said that every such couple has to be reported. So every young person who comes for an abortion, while we can do the abortion, has to be reported to the police and you know what's going to happen then. They won't come to us. For me, a reasonable cutoff would have been 16, which our law actually had till a few years ago, till we made 16, 18. 
we do know and there's enough evidence to oh. say and this is not about modern India you know sometimes people say oh culture and this has always happened exactly. young people who are together will be interested in each other and young people will be sexually active and you have to support them and by pushing it under the carpet you are actually denying them contraception and safe abortions. We need to advocate for a solution to this so that young people having consensual sex do have access to things like contraception and safe abortion. Because let's be honest, a law like this is not going to stop teenagers from having sex. It's simply going to force them to opt for unsafe abortions outside of the healthcare system. Let's now talk about what abortion actually entails. In the early stages of a pregnancy, a woman can opt for a medical abortion where abortion pills simply have to be taken orally. Dr. Noser explained that tablets containing medications called mifepristone and mesoprostol have to be taken in two stages and these medications terminate and expel the pregnancy. The other option in the first trimester is called suction aspiration and this is a simple surgical procedure either involving a manual aspirator or an electrically operated device that uses gentle suction to remove the pregnancy. For later stage abortions, slightly more complicated surgical procedures are required but it is worth keeping in mind that around 90% of all abortions take place in the first trimester. Now, are abortions painful? Well, that depends on what procedure she opts for and where in her pregnancy she is. So I'm going to let Dr. Noser explain. Abortions are painful. Well, medication abortion would be painful because when the uterus is expelling the pregnancy, there is pain. But you know something women have taught me? If they want something, they are willing to give up something to get it. So majority of almost all my patients go for medication abortion in the first trimester and it is their choice. If they came for a surgical abortion, they would get an anesthesia, either a local anesthesia or a short general anesthesia and have no pain. So while medi how painful I tell women will expect it to be like a very painful period and expect the bleeding to be heavy like a very heavy period. Here is a medication which gives you pain and gives you bleeding and still has an 80 to 90 percent satisfaction rate because she says you know I'll do it at home mm. I will do it with my privacy nobody needs to know sometimes not even the husband or partner uh, I'm not answerable to anyone I don't have to go to hospital I don't have to spend a fortune doing an abortion and so pain management and there's a lot of pain management we do so mm -hmm. if I give medication abortion I make sure she gets pain relief of course, in the second trimester, the pain is like labor pain. So I'll give her pain relief. And I'll make sure, and I even sometimes would maybe even use an epidural. If a labor pa laboring patient is entitled to a painless labor, why not her? Okay. But it depends on facilities and availabilities and costs. How safe is abortion? When performed correctly, abortions, and especially early stage abortions, are actually very, very safe. Having an abortion is many, many times safer than delivering a child. All right, wow. at any stage. And the early abortions are probably the safest thing that we do in medical practice, in obstetric practice. It's also worth keeping in mind that safe abortions, particularly when performed in the early stages of a pregnancy, do not impact a woman's long-term fertility. So how common is abortion? It is much more common than many of you may think. In fact, simply going by the numbers, abortion is so common that you or someone among your friends and family are highly likely to either have had or have an abortion in the future over your lifetime. Here's Dr. Noser with the statistics. And there's this organization called the Good Marker Institute. I'm privileged to serve on their board. That's the best prevalence studies. They have estimated that the number of abortions that happens each year in the world is 56 million. This number is very important for me because I tell every woman I look after who's having an abortion, who's made up her mind, who's 100% sure she wants it, who's thought it out through, but she's still feeling not so good about it. And I tell her, you're just one of 56 million. Annually. 56 and the million 56 annually, million right? annually. And there is such a sisterhood. There is a sisterhood in knowing I'm one of 56 million women, so how can... So in, in a conference many years ago, I actually said that, you know, if you're having second thoughts, anything that 56 million are doing each year can't be immoral or wrong. In India, we had a study published in The Lancet, which is one of our most reputed journals. Again, the Guttmacher Institute, published in 2018. 
15.6 million abortions in India each year. Births, 27 million. Now what can be more common in a woman's life and how many doctors to perform this? A handful. Perhaps part of the reason that abortion is so common is that there are huge gaps in our awareness around and access to safe and effective contraception. In fact, there are so many misconceptions around contraception that even when it is accessible, it often isn't used correctly. For example, many people often confuse emergency contraception, birth control pills, and abortion pills, when in fact, they are not the same thing. Let me explain. You can think of birth control pills as prevention. They're a hormonal medication taken daily as a primary form of contraception that prevent a woman's body from being capable of getting pregnant even when sexually active. They cannot, however, terminate a pregnancy. You can think of emergency contraception as a sort of interception. Colloquially known as the morning after pill, it is used as an emergency option when a primary form of contraception is not in place. And so the morning after pill or emergency contraception is only effective up to five days after intercourse. It works by intercepting or delaying ovulation and or by interfering with sperm movement, making it less likely for the sperm to fertilize the egg. And therefore, it is only effective in a short period of time after intercourse, only up to 120 hours after intercourse, because essentially what it's doing is intercepting the pregnancy. It is acting before the pregnancy occurs. It is, however, significantly less effective than a primary form of birth control, such as birth control pills or IUDs, and therefore it should not be used as one's primary form of contraception. You can think of medical abortion or abortion pills as termination. It is only taken after a pregnancy has already occurred, and it works by blocking the hormones that are required to maintain a pregnancy and by stimulating the uterus to expel the pregnancy. It is not the same as emergency contraception or birth control. Each of these three medications are different and serve different functions. I hope you're still with me because we're now going to get to the most important part of the video, which is why it's so important that we all support a woman's right to choose. On a fundamental level, every human being deserves sexual and bodily autonomy. We deserve the right to be able to make our own choices when it comes to our own bodies. And so denying women access to safe abortion isn't going to magically stop unwanted pregnancies. It is only going to put the lives and health of women all over the world in danger. Uh, I've always believed that if you don't give a woman an abortion with dignity, that woman is still going to do the abortion anyway. And we've got enough international evidence to tell us this. Countries where abortion is completely illegal, still have the same incidence of an abortion as compared to a country where an abortion is legal, in fact, probably higher. I can tell you from working with women, every woman has a story. I mean, th th every single woman is the same, but is completely different. And trust me, no woman has ever, ever done an abortion casually or lightly. And when people talk about women being careless and doing it too easily, it actually you know, gets my back up because I know that this is not a decision they make lightly. They're making this decision most of the time, not for themselves, but for everyone around them as well. And that's why they need nothing but support and there should be no hindrance coming in the way of this decision. Ideally, I would love it if we could live in a world where we didn't have to hide it. If I yes. could say yes, that, you know, as a woman, one could say they had an abortion without worrying about judgment. Absolutely. Because nobody goes out to, you know, you don't want to get an abortion. It's obviously you're in a situation where this was the only alternative you have. It's That's not like right. you're going to seek out an abortion. I think people who <laughs> campaign against it act like women are going to go out and get abortions, you know, if they're no. readily available. Nobody yeah. wants an abortion, mm. but that option should be available to you if you have no other alternative and That's you don't right. want to carry through your pregnancy. That's right. And it's inevitable. Pregnancies will happen with the best contraception as a failure. Pregnancies will happen because we are human beings. And pregnancies often happen because women do not have autonomy exactly. in making choices. More often than not, it's not her but it's her partner who's you know trying i don't like to use a con i'm sorry there has to be something that's there that protects her and it, these things are extremely important in 
both your lives. I also learned from Dr. Nozer that abortion is still the third leading cause of maternal death in our country. And guess what? We could wipe it out tomorrow if we just provided access to contraception and abortion to all women. Also, the argument that making safe abortion easy to access would increase the incidence of sex selection is a problematic mixing up of issues. Because in fact, 90% of abortions take place in the first trimester, at which point it is very difficult to determine the sex. In fact, at that point, the pregnancy is no more than a little bit of tissue. And in any case, prenatal sex determination is illegal in India. Women deserve the right to be able to make their own choices with regard to their body and their reproductive health. And they deserve support, not stigma. If you found this video interesting or you'd like more information on the topic, definitely check out the My Body, My Choice campaign online. I will put a link in the description. They put out some great information and resources. And if, like us, you believe that every woman deserves the right to choose what she does with her own body and her health, then please do take the pledge to support choice, not stigma. I will put a link to the pledge in the description as well. I also want to say a special thank you to Dr. Nozer Sherrier for sharing his knowledge and insights with us. He is one of the country's leading gynecologists. He consults at several of Mumbai's top hospitals, and he is also on the boards of several of the world's leading women's rights and women's sexual and reproductive health organizations. I hope you learned something from this video. I certainly learned a lot from making it. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Please share it. Leave me a comment. Follow me on social media. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.